everyone, my name is Diego Agudelo Espanol and today I will talk about Bayesian Online Prediction of Change Points, which is joint work with my colleagues at the Massman Institute for Intelligent Systems in Turing. Let me start with defining what a change point is. Traditionally, in time series modeling, there are certain settings in which the underlying parameters of the observation model change drastically over time. Um, Consider, for instance, in this case, that the data is being, is, is being sampled from a Gaussian distribution with certain mean and variance. And at certain time steps, denoted here by the vertical dashed lines, the mean of the, co of the Gaussian is changing suddenly from one value to another. These change points, in turn, induce a segmentation in the time series. Uh, in this particular case, we have three segments with durations G1, G2, and G3. However, in the online setting, chances are that we will be somewhere in between the segment boundaries. And it could be insightful to reason about, for example, the run length, or the run length variable, which is simply the number of time steps elapsed since the last change point occurred. But it could, it could also be interesting to infer how many time steps there are until the next change point and known as the residual time, in this case denoted by LT. We argue that performing inference over these quantities is of practical importance because uh, it could potentially support us in, in the planning of, of interventions, uh, for example, in the medical domain. And ultimately, it could uh, enable our models to be actionable. Uh, and we will showcase a couple of examples at the end of the talk. We are building on top of the work of Adams and McKay. Uh, they proposed the Bayesian online change computation algorithm to compute the run length posterior efficiently uh, in a recursive fashion. Um, with this figure, we want to showcase the kind of inference that can be uh, drawn from such posterior. In the top row, you see a 2D observation sequence, and on the bottom row, you see the resulting uh, posterior inferences uh, coming from the run length posterior. Each column is a cumulative mass function where white denotes zero mass and black denotes one. And as I said, uh, it happens to be the case that the joint distribution between the run length and the observations can be, re can be written as a function of the same joint coming from the previous time step, shown here on the right-hand side. The update equation is also a function of the underlying predictive model contribution, which is simply the observation likelihood. Note that the observations are conditioned on, us, on the subset of observations since the last change point, uh, according to the current run length RT. There is also the so-called hazard contribution, and it simply parameterizes the likelihood of having a change point given a particular run length. But what do we want to predict future change points? Um, it could also be the case that given a particular task at hand, we might want to incorporate the total segment duration into the observation model itself. Uh, or more generally, we could also be interested in handling multiple underlying predictive models, and we would like to perform inference over them. Well, uh, it turns out that it's possible to perform uh, joint inference over over, over all these hidden quantities. And we use uh, the term Bayesian line segment notation uh, deliberately to refer to the fact that we are jointly inferring the segment starting position and the ending position of the segment as well. So in this uh, figure, we also show the kind of inference that can be drawn from this new posterior. Uh, in the second row, you see the inference over the hidden step set. And it tells us basically which underlying predictive model is active at a particular time step t. Each column in this case is a probability mass function. On the third row, you, we see the already the previously introduced run length posterior. And finally, more importantly, we have the residual time posterior, which now enables us to um, infer when the next change point will happen. As, as in previous work, uh, it turns out that we can write our joint uh, of run length, total duration, hidden state, and observation of type T as a function of the same joint coming from the previous time step, shown, shown here on the right-hand side. 
However, this time the UPM contribution is more flexible in the sense that it takes into account the total segment duration and also the hidden state set T. And now, as opposed to the hazard contribution, we now have what we call the dynamics contribution, which simply parameterizes the probability of transitioning from a particular configuration of the hidden variables to a new one. We showcase uh, the inferences drawn from our model uh, in data coming from EEG recordings from uh, mice. On the top row, you see the features that we are feeding into our model. In the second row, you can see the ground truth hidden state values, which in this case denote different sleep states, red, blue, and green. Uh, alongside, we also show the maximum a posteriori sequence of hidden states. And on the third and fourth row, we show the run length posterior and residual time posterior, uh, alongside with the ground truth values depicted by blue dashed lines. Uh, interestingly, note that the residual time posterior exhibit, exhibits higher variance than the run length posterior, and we argue that this is the case because the residual time inference is a, inherently a predictive task as opposed to the run length inference, which is a retrospective task. And uh, we also um, report experiments on ECG data coming from human heartbeats. Uh, in this case, the hidden states account for different phases of the human heartbeat, uh, namely diastole and systole. Uh, however, this time we do take into account the total segment duration into account, uh, as shown here. Uh, the, the feature vector F uh, takes as input the ratio between the run length and the total duration. Uh, and intuitively, this means that we are we want our observation model to exhibit some sort of invariance to the time scale of the segments. Um, in particular, note that the residual time posterior uh, is less uncertain, or in other words, is, is more peaked compared to the previous one. And we argue that this is the case because with a few observations, uh, our framework can figure out that total time scale of the segment and therefore make more accurate predictions of the about when the next change point will happen. In summary, we extend the Bayesian line change point detection algorithm to infer when the next change point will occur. Um, we also show how this enables us to use observation models that take into account the total segment duration. Uh, and we would like to emphasize the fact that our model is highly modular and composable and can be integrated with existing extensions to the original uh, Bayesian online change point detection algorithm. Uh, we would like to thank you for your attention and we welcome you to check our paper and code. Thanks a lot.